let's get ready and start the discussion. I've got uh, three of my guests uh, in the studio now, and I'm sure we are ready to start whilst we wait for the third, the final person uh, to join us to do the discussion. Uh, thank you very much. Now, uh, those I have in the studio are uh, Abdul Malik Kubaku, he's editor in chief of the New Crusading Guide newspaper. We have Samuel Abu Jinapo, he's aide to the NPP flag bearer Nana Adudankwa Akufuado. Uh, he's also a lawyer. James Agalga, he is deputy interior minister and he's a lawyer. Uh, Abraham Malba member of the NDC's legal team, will join us shortly. On the phone, we are going to be speaking to Suleiman Abrahima, Executive Secretary of the Media Foundation for West Africa, and also Tony Forson, who is the Vice President of the Ghana Bar Association. Now, Suleiman Abrahima is on the line. Thank you very much for joining us, Suleimana. Thank you very much for having me. Something. Great to have you. Now, um, <coughs> we have called you because you, have, you are one of the groups that have issued a statement. You issued a statement sometime in the afternoon of yesterday, and the statement was to the effect that something has happened in, on, the media, on the media, which you are calling the attention of the media, the media, National Media Commission to do something. Um, tell us about it. And I would also be pointing to parts of your statement to you whilst you speak to us. Well, something, thank you very much. As you know, um, since mid-April, we have been monitoring campaign language on dozens of radio stations across the country. Mm -hmm. And out of this, we issue uh, reports every two weeks, um, identifying radio stations on which certain comments or campaign language that we think are abusive or indecent have happened, and we name the individuals who used such comments, and then, of course, where it is possible, identify the political parties uh, that these people are associated with. Now, the objective, really, is to help at least refocus our campaigning, help improve the media's role in the elections or in the, in the electoral process by making the campaigns, you know, focus on issues rather than insults or abusive language and so on. And then in the process, ultimately, also contribute to this whole thing about the need for peace during our elections. Now, the particular instance you refer to is a, a very, very serious, insightful statement made by one Alistair Nelson, whom I don't know. Mm. And this was, you know, something that we felt, well, it will come in our report when we issue the report covering June, but this is particularly worrying. And, of course, it also happened on a radio station that consistently, in our, in, in, in our three reports we've issued so far, if you put the figures together, TFM, on which this incident happened, topped the list with 40 incidents um, so far. And this is a station when we issued our first report and second report. They actually indicated on air that, I mean, and, and I must say that the majority, about 90% of these incidents, happened on one particular program called which is an afternoon political discussion program. And the person cited on the program includes the host of the program called Mugabe Masi, and he has been cited severally. Of course, you would expect that when persons appear on your program, just as you are handling this program now, and I've consistently heard you tell people, no, I wouldn't allow this to pass, have to retract, you have to apologize, you have to clarify, you have to substantiate, and so forth. And that is the level of professionalism we all expect. Of course, we have our intersections, so once in a while something would happen. But if you have a radio station that consistently leaves the park, mm -hmm. where the person hosting the program 
is the one you know continuously cited. And this person goes there, threaten justices of the Supreme Court, justices of the High Court, in fact, abuse them, insult them, and the host sees nothing with it. And in fact, according to the Hour Monitor, who have just forwarded the entire recording to me, when the person finished making his submission, the host actually said, Medasi, you know, Deputy Commander of the Airways, Alistair Nelson. In other words, encouraging him or applauding him, both comments that were made. Okay. And we thought that this is extremely worrying. People have concerns about the NMC. The NMC says, well, it doesn't have the constitutional powers to punish and so on. Mm. But it is our considered view that the NMC could really assert itself, even with the little you know, constitutional powers it, it has. As in the man, having the mandate to promote professionalism means that there are certain mechanisms they can put in place to ensure mm. that we, at least we avoid some of these things that can derail the collective efforts we are making towards you know, improving you, our government. You, you, describe, freedom and so you describe the comments that were made on this radio station as rabble rousing. And that's the title of your press release you issued yesterday. And you say the rabble rousing must stop. And yet you also point to the fact that as you just said a while ago, that you have, by your monitoring, you have seen that the station has consistently used indecent or violent language, which is not supposed to be to tolerated, uh, in the name of uh, free, free speech and press uh, freedom in, in the country. Um, beyond your appeal to, particularly, first of all, your appeal to the National Media Commission, it looks like that's where you say the back should stop. What exactly do you expect the National Media Commission to do? Well, um, yesterday, before issuing the, the statement, I had um, spoken on the, to the chairman of the commission. Mm. And um, he told me that they had actually written to this station just about, a, you know, over a complaint that had been filed and other concerns that they have. And I believe that we cannot have an environment where we say, well, the constitutionally mandated body, which is the National Media Commission, doesn't have the power to stop any station or to sanction any media. And therefore, what we have is an environment where any radio station at all can decide to do anything. I doubt that is where we are. And it is perhaps the commission itself hasn't really maybe asserted the authority it has. Because... I believe, yes, it is the NCA that issues the licenses, and therefore it is the one that can actually take, I mean, um, uh, prevent a frequency from, from broadcasting or shut down a frequency. Right. But what I also believe is that the N NMC mm. may put, and, and in 2012 they did it, where they said, look, if we find a radio station to be too troublesome, we would engage with the National uh, Communications Authority to make sure that that station is taken off air. That threat was there. It wasn't actualized, perhaps, because no station really crossed the red line. But here we have a situation where a particular station has literally crossed the red line, and mm. we would want to see what can be done. Or we, uh, we, 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 we shortly, in a country we shortly will be speaking. Radio stations can just do we, anything because the NNC has no powers to sign. We will be speaking also to the GBA, the Ghana Bar Association, that also issued a statement uh, in the evening. Um, for the GBA, they don't, they have actually classified the comments as contemptuous of the court and also uh, some criminal elements in there because of the threats that have been issued. Because um, as you say, you have got a copy of the, of the audio recording. Um, I have the audio recording and the transcript as well. And these are two individuals that are attributed, the statement is attributed to. They are Lester and one Godwin. And you hear them say specifically and insult the judges and say that they know their homes and they know every judge's home and uh, refer them to what happened leading to the killing of the three justices who were... Uh, for whom the memori a me uh, a memorial was observed um, on Thursday 4. They refer them to what happened and seek to suggest that if they are not careful, 
uh, a similar thing will befall them if they don't uh, do the right thing in, as far as this uh, Abu Ramadan case is concerned. And they were very clear in their mind that the, the, the court was seeking to issue directives to the EC. Meanwhile, the Constitution, and they quoted the Constitution, saying that the Constitution does not allow anybody to dictate to the EC. And if the court was doing so, the court would be blamed for uh, any violence or trouble that will happen in the country. The GBA feels there are uh, criminal aspects of it and there are uh, contempt aspects of it. Now, you say NMC can do something. You belong to the group of people who were against the NMC's uh, new regulations that were passed recently and regulations that are being challenged in the court. These were the regulations that gave the NMC teeth to bite. These were the regulations that gave the NMC the opportunity to shut down a station and exact you know, financial damages from them. As we, we know now, the NMC does not have the power to go shut the radio or to discipline the, 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 the individuals involved. Yes, something. I think that um, it's important that you bring this issue of LI-2224 up. And I need to uh, state that the Media Foundation had issues with the LI, mm. but our issues specifically relating to issues, uh, provisions that we thought were quite sweeping, you know, granted arbitrary powers, and in a manner that if you have a commission that decides that they are going to apply the provisions mm. as they are or as they were, you may end up having people thrown into jail. And as the commission consistently also indicated, the LI was targeting owners and not even journalists. Again, we had issues with provisions such as re the requirement of radio stations to submit, for example, details of their programming. So, for example, multimedia would have to submit a news file, who is the host, what are the issues to be discussed, and so on and so forth. And that was very close to the whole phenomenon of censorship. And so it wasn't the case that we were entitled, and I did consistently say that we cannot live in an unregulated broadcast industry. Mm. And therefore, having such an, an ally is important. But okay. it's important to also make sure that we don't introduce a, a piece of legislation that would eventually also run us into trouble as far as issues like criminal law, you know, throwing people into jail for media offenses, and so on and so forth, are concerned. But having said that, I think I did not want to go into the legal issues because I'm not a lawyer. Okay. But we've had occasions where people have been picked up in this country for mm. making inciting comments. Mm. And I remember in 2012, Kennedy Japan, for example, was picked up and detained. It went to court and so on and so forth. Right. And so I, I think that there are various ramifications uh, on this particular issue. Mm. And as I said, as, as we said in our statement, we think this presents a test case for us to really settle on the fact that the NMC has no power and therefore anybody at all can do anything or it has no power, but through other mechanisms, it can make sure that professionalism is ensured on our airways. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Suleiman Ibrahim heads the Media Foundation for West Africa, and they have been championing the rights of uh, media owners, particularly journalists. They've been championing the rights of journalists in the sub-region and they do a lot of work here in Ghana as well. Uh, thank you very much for your time. They issued a statement yesterday. Uh, it's a long one, and uh, we got him to speak to portions of it. It's a long one. They, they are calling uh, basically on the NMC, the National Media uh, Commission, to take, pay attention to threats that were issued by uh, one or two people on the Muntier radio here in Accra is, uh, is a vernacular uh, speaking um, radio station, a cheese speaking radio station. And then they made some really very interesting comments. We are unable to play those, some of those comments to you because uh, we will not do that. Um, you, you had direct, direct attacks on the judges, uh, particularly those sitting on the ongoing case with the EC. And they actually referred to some uh, high court judges as well, and then referred to the incidents 
that led to the killing of the three high court judges uh, for which uh, a memorial was observed on Thursday. You know, every, every year there is a Matthias Day that is observed, and they made a reference. And this, this uh, broadcast was done on, uh, coincidentally on the same day of the memorial, and then referred to the memorial and suggested that um, if the judges were not careful, particularly the Supreme Court judges, then uh, a, a fate like what befell these uh, judges might befall them. And you heard somebody clearly say that uh, they know every judge and where they live, and they can identify their homes. There were other comments I cannot relay uh, because uh, you, you can't believe that uh, they will be made, really, um, including very suggestions of direct violence, uh, maybe of sexual nature to uh, a female judge. And a couple of things had actually been said. Now, the Ghana Bar Association also issued a statement on the back of those uh, comments that were made. For the Media Foundation for West Africa, their interest is that the National Media Commission should take care of the, the host of the show. We understand the host of that show is one uh, Mugabe Masi. The real name is supposed to be uh, Salifu Masi or so. And he sort of didn't issue disclaimers, edged the people on, and they made all those comments. And when they were done, he thanked them for actually making those comments and encouraged them. And so they want the media commission to target those individuals, uh, the, the host, and deal with the host. So what happens to the, those who made the comments? What should happen to them? I'll also be sharing with you shortly. I'm getting information that they are issuing uh, retractions and apologies. The Ghana Bar Association statements reads, the Ghana Bar Association has read with great concern and disquiet the insulting comments directed at the passing of the chairperson of the Electoral Commission. Okay, sorry, I'm reading the, the this is the first one. <laughs> this is uh, the first statement that was issued, and that was in respect of uh, the uh, Charlotte Say and the insults that were also held at the abuse at her. Let me read to you the Ghana Bar Association statement on this uh, latest issue because we'll be dealing with the Kenya Japan uh, matter as well. Now, on the, on the television, you would have seen an image and there was a wrong um, attribution of the name of the individual. The individual you saw, uh, the photograph you saw, belongs to the, one of the guys, uh, Alistair. Uh, that was his image that you saw a while ago on the television. Now, the Ghana Bar Association said, the Ghana Bar Association has listened with shock and horror sound recordings from a talk show program ostensibly held on Accra Bay's Montier 101 FM radio, during which some panelists, Alistair Nelson and Godwin Akogon, made threats of harm or of death to Supreme Court and High Court judges. The language used by the said panelists was particularly clear and graphic and showed a clear intent to put the fear of harm or death in our judges. Those words were also meant to incite hatred among the public against the judges. Further, the words used were in blatant contempt of the Supreme Court as they sought to scandalize the court or otherwise lower its authority, the GBA is shocked that the owners and uh, proprietors of the said radio station do not appear to have taken any steps to sanction the panelists in the face of such unacceptable conduct and language. The Ghana Bar Association condemns the threats on the lives of judges in no uncertain terms. These threats are even more painful to the legal profession because they were ostensibly made on the 29th of June, 2016, the eve of Matthias Day, a day when the profession remembers the three high court judges and retired military officer who were kidnapped from their homes and murdered by agents of the state. 
it was therefore sickening and horrifying <coughs> to hear these gentlemen referring to the murders of our martyrs with excitement, drawing panelists to it, uh, to it claiming that they could also identify the homes of our judges today for the purposes of visiting them with violence and saying things such as, quote, when we finish them, then it will be over. They have, they have to go. We will see them off to return to where they came from, unquote. Such gruesome glorification of the bloody and dastardly acts of yesteryears and current threat to our judiciary cannot be tolerated or allowed under our present democratic dispensation. The constitutional guarantees of freedoms of speech and expression, which includes freedom of the press and other media, are not absolute. Citizens are expected not to use that freedom to endanger Ghana, encourage disrespect for our nationhood, or incite hatred against members of the community. We hereby call on the Inspector General of Police to cause the investigation of those matters, arrest of the gentlemen, charge them with the relevant offenses, and put them before court. We call on the Attorney General to ensure that these gentlemen are prosecuted with all the force that she can master and do her utmost to secure conviction of them. We call on the National Media Commission to investigate uh, this matter and impose sanctions that are permitted by law on the radio station and its owners. We also call on all well-meaning Ghanaians to condemn these gentlemen, their words and conduct, and the radio station to show that there is no room for such conduct and that Ghana will never allow those dark days to return. The bar wishes finally to reiterate its position as encapsulated in the national uh, president's speech at the 34th Remembrance Service held in memory of the martyrs of the, of the martyred judges on 30th June 2016. Quote, assaults to the rule of law have not and should never manifest themselves in the horrific circumstances we have just reminded ourselves of, unquote, dated at Accra this first day of July 2016, and is signed by Benson Nuchufui, National President, the Ghana Bar Association. Um, let me bring in my guest uh, briefly. I'll be reading to you some two statements coming in. Uh, one uh, of apology, another uh, semi-apology, and or seeking to suggest that um, the, there's been a wrong attribution to the comment. Maybe I should read that before I get to my guest now. Now, there is a statement here, a very short one. It is dated the 2nd of July, 2016, and signed by Alistair uh, Tyro Nelson, the gentleman who is said to have made these comments uh, together with one other. And he says that on Wednesday, the 29th of June, I participated in a program on Muntier FM. During my contribution, I made statements that in context, content, though conditional, and timing are regrettable. Notwithstanding the many distortions that have accompanied the numerous public comments, I wish to apologize unreservedly to the listening public, including those who have called to caution and advice and also to all members of the bench who have been offended by my contribution on the program. I also wish to apologize to the management of Muntia FM for the unfortunate development. Thank you, Alistair Nelson. And the second one, which uh, I got just a while ago, says that it's signed by Godwin Aku Gunn, member of the communication team, NDC. It says, my attention has been drawn to a widely circulated statement issued by the Ghana Bar Association in which a call has been made for my arrest and prosecution. The basis for the call is that I made comments threatening to kill Supreme Court judges 
on a political discussion program on Muntier FM on Wednesday, 29 or June 2016. For the avoidance of doubt, I wish to place it on record that I did not participate in any political discussion program on Muntier FM on the said date, neither have I ever made comments threatening judges with death or any harm of any sort. The claim by the GBA is therefore false, and the call for my arrest completely untenable. I therefore demand a retraction of the GBA statement and an apology for the harm done to my reputation. This is from the other uh, gentleman named in those comments. That is Godwin. Um, but we are getting interesting comments that suggest that if you listen clearly to a, <coughs> an extended version of the program, you will hear the host of the show introduce this particular gentleman onto the show as well. So where do we take it from? I think I'd like to start with you, uh, James. Um, have you had the opportunity to listen to the, the comments? Yes, I'm saying good morning to your cherished viewers. Mm. I haven't uh, listened to the comments on radio, right? but I've listened um, quite extensively to the commentary that has been run on that particular broadcast. Okay. And for me, well, it's refreshing to hear that Tahiru, one of the uh, people who allegedly made those comments on Muntie FM, has rendered an qualified and unqualified apology right. and sought to retract his words. Mm. The second individual who is supposed to be an NDC communicator right. has put in a disclaimer. He says he's not the one. Mm. And so, I mean, that is an issue that needs to be interrogated further. Mm. Uh, but Samson, having said that, I would be very quick to add that the security of our justices mm. is something that the President Mahama led if you, if you administration. Have, if you have the opportunity to listen to the tape and the, the extended version of the tape, you hear the introduction of this uh, Godwin, and you hear him come in mm. and directly attacks Justice Doche, mm. Justice Badegbe, and the CJ. Uh, so maybe I think we we'll need to be, uh, take time and verify a lot more because yes. he's denied whether, flatly that yes, he was yes. there. Yes, so whether indeed he's the same person or not. Okay. I agree with you, Samson. Mm. Uh, but like I was saying... He spoke for just about four minutes on the okay. show. Okay, mm. okay. The security of our judges and all those who work in the judiciary, we place a lot of premium mm. on their security. We will not allow anybody to resort to any conduct which will compromise <laughs> the security of our justices. Mm. I mean, they owe their positions to um, the Constitution. The Constitution itself sets up the judiciary and makes it independent to adjudicate over disputes that people would bring before mm. them. And so I don't think that judges on their own go Beyond out there the to apology, adjudicate. I'm just getting information that contempt proceedings are underway to be filed on Monday against them. Very well, Samson. I, I, I am a lawyer. <laughs> mm. I, I, I will not stand. I mean, in opposition to uh, contempt applications brought mm. against anybody who seeks to attack the integrity of a judge or issue direct threats mm -hmm. uh, uh, against a, a, a justice of. The, su the Supreme Court of the land. I will not stand in opposition there to... There are comments coming in suggesting that the BNI should have activated its, uh, well, Samson, itself by Sa Sa long before Samson, now. Samson, <laughs> mm. I am saying that mm. the John Mahama-led administration places a lot of premium on the security of our justices. Right. And of I am sure... every individual. Every individual, right. but here the justices are, are, are the focus of the discussion, and okay. that is why okay. I would single them out mm. and make those statements. Mm. So, and I am sure the justices themselves would also testify to the fact that government has provided them with maximum security. Right. I mean, if we think that security in their residences and even in their offices needs to be beefed up, mm. we will not hesitate to um, do that. And so, the statements that were made are, are regrettable, they are unfortunate, and I condemn them in no uncertain terms. Okay. The government is uh, very, very, very up to the task in mm. providing for the security of our justices, and I would 
use this medium to um, appeal to our justices to continue with the, the performance of their duties without fear or allow themselves to be intimidated by anybody because they have the full backing of the state, right. the police, the security agencies. We will, I mean, having heard these statements, mm. uh, put them on alert in terms of the protection Kuku, and Kuku, the provision is, of security for good, those This justices. is good assurance coming from the Deputy Interior Minister. Um, suggest to you that the justices, um, if they take these comments that serious, um, ought not to be too afraid. Well, I, in principle, yes, why not? It's the responsibility of the state, mm. and for that matter, the government of the day, uh, to ensure uh, that we protect uh, our justices and judges. But as you even indicated, beyond that, so here we are, we have a deputy minister of interior, and uh, based on all these discussions, he's uh, reassuring the justices and justices, that uh, judges that they are safe. Uh, I don't have any reason to be cynical or skeptical, mm. even though our history indicates that we had had similar pledges in the years past, uh, yet something went wrong at the end of the day. Uh, this whole thing about apologies and retractions coming in, I haven't seen the content as such, but uh, maybe it will have an effect to mitigate uh, what the gentlemen are supposed to have done. Right. Some are also denying and all mm. the rest. Mm. It means that we must go back to study exactly what was said. Mm. Obviously something was said. And that something which was said was a disaster and threatening. And so we must find out what was said and mm. then by who said what at which time. Okay. So there's an issue which should not be dismissed. Right. Uh, you know, I, and this is part of my weakness, I've <laughs> had a problem with the contempt animal. You know <laughs> that. Yes. Uh, because I was a victim myself. Mm. And not that I don't think it's legal or that it is proper, mm. but you know it. <coughs> uh, Supreme Court election petition, the stand I took, uh, I'm unable, really, to reconcile myself with people being dragged to the courts for contempt and scandalization and all the rest, even though I know the law backs it in mm -hmm. many respects. This is a personal thing. So I find it difficult when such things happen to go out there and advocate for people to be dragged before the court for sanctions in, in, in the context of contempt. I find it very difficult. And this is a very personal uh, matter I'm making. Uh, you know also I uh, have a certain philosophy that in the extremes, if we were to choose, between ugly noises and the culture of silence, I will choose ugly noises. Of course, I know the balance calls for responsible speech, which is what we are all striving to achieve. But this thing worries. And I know, I've spoken to a few people in the last few days. It recollects, it makes us go back. And you did it, June 30th, 1982. Mm. And the coincidence of the fact that was just a day before the ceremony, you know, to mark the period that this happened. Uh, it worries. It, people tend to forget that one of the judges who was abducted and murdered uh, in, in, on June 30th, 1982, actually received a threatening uh, message before the incident happened. Okay. And then also in the course of the Third Republic, there were focal, open, direct threats against not just those three judges, but quite the entire judiciary because of the judicial intervention in AFIC uh, decisions, if you recall, in the face of the transitional provisions that disabled the judiciary from touching some particular issues. And there were threats, open threats, by both leaders and rank and file activists of uh, those who were against what the judges were doing. If you recall Mrs. Uh, Krantiando, one of the things used against her was the verdict she passed on the dismissal of Gay Hawk workers, okay. and the rest, yeah. you know, and all the rest are touched. If you <coughs> do a scrutiny, the three, uh, the Justice Sakode, is it Sakode? Yes. And then Justice Japan, they had all touched some AFRC issues. And then there was this who talked, oh, they had been bribed. They took bribes to do those things. So a certain 
critical mass of mm -hmm. anger. In this, in this discussion, you hear the reference to that. Yes. And to suggest that they should be careful on this bench yes, as well. Yes, that's why I'm worried. Mm. Because we have a history. And I'm referring to the history in that man that I'm worried to that extent. Okay? Because we, we had it all before. Before that dastardly incident right. occurred. So we should be careful. And that is why mm. I can understand right. those who are alarmed mm. and want action taken. I can understand that. Okay. I'm not standing here, sitting here to oppose those calls or initiatives. Except that I think that if they begin to apologize, they show some sincerity and things. Yes, they could be dragged to court for them to offer the apology on that platform. Right, because uh, it has a the apology, as you said, also serves as a mitigation of the contempt. Yes, and it will be greater so therapy they will purge therapeutic themselves. effect mm. if it's done perhaps in that forum okay. without being sentenced and convicted. Okay. Yeah. All right. Interesting. Uh, Abu? Well, Samson, first of all, let me, uh, let me say good morning to your cherished viewers and listeners. I think it's, a, it's most unfortunate and um, it's a major blot on our democracy. Um, and I'm not particularly surprised because I've listened to Munti FM a couple of times. Oh, I see. And I've, I've gotten reports. Uh, you know the uh, communication director of the MPP is actually sent a petition to the National Media Commission in relation to Munti FM. And I think it's been a build-up. Now, um, how do we deal with matters like this? Um, historically, and even in recent times, the debate has been yeah, ongoing. Yeah, those who say that station somehow mimics uh, <laughs> Oman FM to a certain extent. You don't agree? I, I don't. I don't think so. Okay. Well, because, I don't think so. Because but there's, there's, a, there's, there's some conversation I've heard that suggests that when some, something happens on the other station, as in maybe your man, they may also take it up and then do the other side of it, so to speak. Well, so uh, often there's a fight, well, you know, may, maybe sort of a tear for. Maybe <laughs> it's a bit uncharitable or fair to drag in on my Right. Relative to <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just looking no, at people's I'm, comments I'm going, that I'm they are sending in. That's yeah. the point you are making. I read somewhere, and I, I hope I'm not making a mistake, uh, Mr. Harris Akko mm -hmm. saying publicly okay. that he actually he set up Munti FM. Okay. And that he did so to counter what he perceives. Happens on a man. Yes. Oh, interesting. I heard so. I heard it. Yeah, very, if very I read yeah. it, rather. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, Samson, but whatever it is, Munti or Man FM, whatever, I think that the you principles... You know Mr. Harris Akko, mm. who he is. Yes, yes. Oh, of course, he's... Uh, National Vice Chairman of the NDC. Yes. Mm. I think that the principles should apply across board. And I speak to this dispassionately and very objectively. I, there's been a debate as to how to deal with excesses of free speech. Mm. Do you criminalize it or do you encourage people to take action in civil courts for defamation and the rest? I associate myself with um, a quick view of in appropriate circumstances where we can, we should encourage people to, 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 to speak freely and refrain from criminalizing free speech. And you're also As coming you know, from a law firm where your head of firm is a champion of, of free speech. <laughs> of free speech and against yeah. criminalization of speech. Absolutely. Okay. He's so big on that. Mm. And, and of course, you know, it is born out of that debate that we had a repeal of the criminal libel law. Um, um, thankfully, under the supervision of Nanaku Fuadu at the time. And so that debate has been ongoing. And you also recall that certain persons were arrested for causing fear and panic, and the <laughs> debate went on and on. But I think that in having that discussion, there are certain comments person to a person's exercise of free speech, which clearly is criminal. Now, uh, so if someone gets on the airways and for purpose of our discussion says that he, he will stage a coup tomorrow, I, I don't think that we will ask the government to sue the person uh, in a civil court. That obviously will be a threat or, or a threat to breach the peace of our country. So there are certain comments which clearly falls within the remit mm. of criminality. Now, to be able to deal with this matter, and also because there have been contentions as to exactly what these persons are supposed to have said, denials and what have you. I have a, tr a transcript of what some of them are supposed to have said. I don't intend to read the parts which will create problems for us, but at least... There are portions I will not allow, allow you to and read I won't do that. Show. I won't yeah. do that. Mm. Good. And I, I've, I've read, I've looked at it carefully, just to situate it in the context from which I want to deal with it. Okay, quickly. Vis-a-vis whether or not quickly, it should be in the civil realm mm. or the criminal realm. Good. It says, 
if this nation is destroyed, it will start in the homes of those who wish it so. As I have said, God has opened the way. Those judges who want to pour oxygen into the fire, I know their homes. I know where the judges live in Accra. I can show you. I know their quarters, the Supreme Court judges. I also know the High Court judges. If they like, they should bring it on. It will start in their residences. Okay, end it okay, there. I'll end it there. there. I'll end it there. So, so the point I'm making, um, having read this portion, is that this is a clear threat to the judges. And I think that it, it, it's good that we have um, deputy my very good friend, the deputy yeah. Mr. Yeah. here. And we've had incidences <coughs> or we've had precedents where persons have made comments and the state is moved with all this. Um, powers and machinery to arrest them. Kenya Japan is an example. John Kuma is an example. He's giving a I lot of assurances this, to the this, judges. This That's also a, important, this, isn't it? This is a clear threat, and mm. this flouts the criminal provisions of our country. Mm. If you look at Section 40, 74 and 75 of Act, 30, Act 29, it says clearly, quote, a person who threatens any other person with unlawful harm, with intent to put that person in fear of unlawful harm, commits a misdemeanor, end quote. Threat of death, 75, quote, a person who threatens any other person with death, with intent to put that person in fear of death, commit a second degree for an end quote. So the point I'm making is that I think this goes <coughs> outside the remit of free speech. It gets into the remit of um, the criminal laws mm. of our country. The Deputy Minister of Interior, the mm. government should take a step further um, beyond just assurances to ensure that investigations are conducted. From what you're reading, you're saying that threat of harm um, we, comes under misdemeanor, which is a petty crime, you may get up to a maximum of, say, three years in jail. And then you say, next, if threat of death and so on, you get, uh, that's a second degree exactly. felony. Exactly. You can look at, look at up to about <coughs> 20 or more years in jail. Okay. I'm just trying to uh, bring to our guests, in the, our, our listeners, in a way that they will appreciate the law you're reading. Absolutely. Mm. So, so the point I'm making is that the deputy minister and the government should, should pay particular attention to that. I mean, it will not help the country if the impression is created that when some persons uh, put up certain conduct, even justifiably or unjustifiably, the state deploys um, its criminal machinery at them. But when others clearly make comments like mm. this, which are threatening... But when they, they, they go ahead to give you an apology, you, you accept it, don't you? Well, but let, let's take them through the processes. And as you know, if uh, the state... Even after the apology, you no, should if, take them... if the state investigates mm. this matter and comes to the conclusion that they have committed a crime, and mm. they put them before court. I believe in the court, um, issues of apology may mitigate the punishment that we meted out to them. But it's important that the state demonstrates clearly. The previous situations you are referring to, we didn't have the, the culprits giving apologies. We have an apology. That well, makes a big but, difference. Yeah, but the people, people, <coughs> people decide um, whether to apologize or not, depending on the circumstances. Mm. But I'm saying to you that re with what, from what I've just read, mm. it is very clear mm. that this constitutes a threat to the judges. Okay, and so tied to this quickly, tied to this quickly, let's finish the next other matter of uh, uh, unsavory comments me, on, no, on, the, just, on the on the on the EC boss. But, but, but I'll give you the benefits. Yes, let wrap me quickly, it up. Uh, yeah. state mm. that. The um, statement attributed to uh, Tahiru and the other person, I don't remember the name. Mm. Uh, Alistair and Godwin. It's an unfolding story. Okay. And so definitely, mm. once the story is unfolding, you would expect that the criminal aspects of the statement are going to be dealt with. Mm. I'm not sure that when Kennedy and Japan made those uh, statements about the killing of Ewes and Gans, he was arrested the following day. It took quite some time. That's right. The security yeah. agencies assessed the statement, and when they were satisfied that there were criminal aspects to that particular statement, then they proceeded to effect the arrest. Let me conclude by stating that um, I, I don't know why my senior Kweku Baku um, alluded to um, the, 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 the issue that which has to do with the ownership of uh, Muntia FM. He said, um, Harris, of course, stated categorically that he set it up to, to counter, counter Oman. Oman FM. Mm. And we all know Oman FM is owned by Kennedy Japan, who right. is credited with so many statements which have the potential, or of course even ignited trouble in some cases. He's still on the rampage. So, so the ownership of Muntier here uh, uh, may not be too relevant. Let us oh. deal with 
Let's the keep to the context. Let's, the let's keep to the context of his reference. The please. Who, who, let's keep to the context who, of his who reference. Made the please, please, please. Not extend right. To, uh, let's keep uh, it to the context of his, re his reference. Very well. His yeah. reference was not yeah. Harry Zakor. That was even yes. an afterthought. Of course.